Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know what? I've, I've, I've learned in the 20 years of walking with God that there are three types of people everywhere in life, including the church. The first person is, is the person that is going uh, through a trial right now. Someone that's right now, you're going through a trial, whether it's your children walking away from God, whether it's your marriage, uh, financial, uh, health, but you're going through a trial. The second type of person is that you're in the middle of your trial. Man, you're in the eye of the storm. You know that right now, man, it, it's a make you or break you moment right now. And then there's a the third type of person. The third type of person is the one that's about to exit their trial. I want you to know that whatever circumstance you and I face is temporary. Whatever pain you're going through, it's temporary. Every single trial, every single adversity that you and I face in life has an expiration date on it. The thing that sucks is that we just never know when that date is. And so how was it that these three women were, were able to overcome the adversity, the trials that they had to face in NASA and you know what's interesting is that these women not only changed their life, but they changed NASA, and they changed history, and they changed an entire nation. They could have all just sat back and complained, complained, complained of the mistreatment that they were experiencing. Now, my, mind you, they're, they're people. They have emotions. I'm sure they had ideas and thoughts and, and moments where they just wanted to give up. But these women decided, instead of complaining, they said, we're going to do something about it. That's what God wants us to do. Instead of complaining about the things that you and I face, whether it's in our family home, whether it's in our relationships, whether it's in our, in our marriage, you can complain about it or you can do something about it. Maybe right now you are having unfair treatment at work and it's easier to talk about how, how horrible you're being treated, how bad the situation is, or you can be the kind of employee or employer that says, you know what, instead of wasting my energy complaining about this situation, like church, I'm a pastor, listen, I have all kinds of problems every single week. I could either A, complain about all my church problems, or I can do something about it. You see, what was it about these three women? What, 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 what did they have on the inside? What was, what, what hidden thing was on the inside of them let me tell you something these three women were not normal they were different God did not create you to be normal God created every single one of you to be different what do you mean be different well if you're a Christ follower you live different you talk different you believe different Come on, if you're a Christ follower, here's what it looks like. You no longer serve yourself. You now serve Jesus. That's what different looks like. And these three women decided to not be normal. Normal is to complain. Normal is to whine. Normal is to give up. Normal is to quit. Normal is to say nothing will ever change. That's normal living. Different says if God be for me, who could be against me? Different says, you know what, it's, it's, it's all a mess right now, but, but with God, all things are possible. That's different. And we got to come back to the place, church, where we have to live different and no longer be normal people. That's not what God created. God created me to be different. Say it with me. I am different in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Being different should show itself on how you treat people. You shouldn't treat people normal. You should treat people different. When you go to the, the restaurant and you're sitting at a table and the waiter is waiting on you, or server, whatever they call them now, we treat them different. It's not like, yeah, I expected you to fill my drink. Yeah, I expected you to, you know, bring, but it's treat them different. You, you, you love on them. You you, you thank them. Thank you. <laughs> it will go a long way. You treat people different. 
You, you say thank you. You say please. When you work with people, coworkers, you don't, you don't get in the, in, in the, in the bandwagon of, of, of gossip and slander. You, you don't sit there and, and, and start getting sucked into the drama that brings trauma into someone's life. We think different. How you treat people, how you invest your time looks different. You know what? I always hear this from Christians. They're like, Pastor, you know what? I'm having challenges with my family. What's wrong? What, what, what is it about your family? Yeah, they're always complaining about me serving at the church too much. <laughs> if you're the one that's been complaining about your family members serving in the church, you're normal. <laughs> different says, you know what? I'm not serving Man, I'm serving Jesus, therefore I serve man. When I serve Jesus, it looks different. Of course, people are going to say, why are you going to church so much? Why do you have to go to church every Sunday? Why can't you do church every other Sunday? Or once a month every, uh, uh, on a Sunday? Well, that's Because that's normal. Different says, you know what? I don't go to church for the tradition of man. I go to church because I seek Jesus, because I pursue Jesus, because I want to grow in Jesus. I seek Jesus so that I can discover the hidden talent that's on the inside of me. I go to Jesus to discover the, the hidden gems that he's placed in me, the creativity, come on, the talent, the skill sets that he's placed on the inside of you. There's one and his name is Jesus and he placed that in you. You invest your money different. <laughs> you always hear this. Felicia was actually telling me our worship, uh, uh, not worship leader anymore. She already got graduated into our media uh, ministry. But she said that she was at, at the grocery store in the checkout line. And uh, she was buying flowers for the church. And the cashier said, what are you buying those for? She's like, oh, I'm buying these for my church. And then the cashier right there starts saying, flowers, what? Is that what your church does with the money? Your church buys flowers. What kind of car does your pastor drive? What kind of, and just try, this is the cashier. And then she said that five people in line started saying, oh, yeah, I know those churches. I know what they do with their money. And they just started boom, 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 boom. Attack, attack, attack. You know what? She could have been normal and be like, screw y'all. <laughs> you know? Uh. She could have said, what do you guys, what do you care? When was the last time you gave something? Oh, that's what you'd want to say, right? Yeah, the only reason you have an issue with giving to God is because you don't give. For those of you that don't give. <laughs> but you know what she did? She said, no, you know what, let me just explain something to you. In my church, we see lives changed. In my church, we reach our community. In my church, we serve communities. We feed a 1,000 people a month. In my church, we reach the, the world globally. In my church, we change lives. And, of course, everybody shut their mouth after that. You know what? That's different. How you spend your time and how you invest your money should say different. If you look at your checkbook, if you look at your accounting, and none of your accounting says, I built God's house, or I built anything for God, you're normal. Different believes God's word. Giving is not man's idea. Giving is God's idea. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son. Why? For eternal life for you and I. Aren't you glad that we don't have a cheap God? <laughs> Let's keep going. Difference should look different in how you work. Why are you staying longer? Dude, you're already off. Why do you have to stay longer? You see, because Jesus said this. When they compel you to go in one mile, he said go two. Isn't it so interesting how many of us will only do what we're ask, asked to do, but will never go beyond what we're asked to do? That's normal. When you do exactly what your boss tells you to do, you're normal. When you go above and beyond what your boss asks you to do, that's different. That's where the favor of God comes. The favor of God doesn't come on your lot just because you're God's kid. The favor of God comes because you work different. It's quiet in this Pentecostal church. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? <laughs> I told the 8 a.m. they had the same issue. I said, dang. I said, you know what? It's okay. You guys are all normal. The 10 o'clock will be different. <laughs> but you know what the truth is? The 10 o'clock is normal. The 12 o'clock will be different. 
Can I get an amen? amen? So Peter, let's bring it back to the word. So Peter, we know Peter was a great apostle, and, and he's hearing the church complain. They're complaining about the persecution of their time. That's why the, the book of Peter was written, because there were letters to the church. And the reason Peter was writing these letters were because the, the Christians were getting very weary and tired. The Christians started kind of just backing off. They, they were no longer pressing forward because the persecution was just way too much, way too overwhelming that people stopped going to church. Their church and their times was meeting in homes. Church has always been something that, that God did uh, since the time of Jesus. Jesus went to church on the Sabbath, right? He'd always go and be reading the Bible or the Torah and all that and just be talking God's stuff. Well, here Peter is, is hearing the complaints. But Peter says, you know what? I need to remind these people something. I need to remind these Christians about something. And look what he says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. At the very first words out of Peter says this to the church. And here's what he's saying to Elevate Church as well. He said, this letter is from Peter. He wanted to make it clear. This is Peter telling you this. Vote for Pedro, right? <laughs> he said, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to God's what? God's what? Did you choose God? Too many people think that I chose God. No, you didn't choose God. God chose you. You think you chose God. You didn't qualify. He qualified you. So Peter immediately, man, he just hits him right between the eyes. Guess what? Man, you are God's chosen people. I love that. I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners. Check this out. Who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus and Galatia and Cappadocia and Asia and Bithynia. And so he's like, hey, listen, guys. Let me be straight up with you guys. I'm talking to God's chosen people who are foreigners. So he straight up says, you're a foreigner. You know the Greek word foreigner, if you guys put look up on the screen, it means this. It means exiles. It means alien. It means strangers. Huh? Danger strangers. You have to realize that we are a stranger of this world. The Bible says you live in this world, but you are not of it. And so many of us live normal as if you're going to live in this world forever. The reason we live different is because right now you and I, we are just passing by. We are living on this earth, doing the work of God for the purpose of an eternal destination called heaven. We have an a, a eternal father, a spiritual father. God the Father who loves us, who instructs us, who leads us, who guides us. But the truth is this, is that Peter had to remind the people that, hey, listen, stop complaining. Jesus said if they persecuted you, they're going to persecute me. When they persecute you, now you're living different. When no one's persecuting you regarding your faith, you're living normal. People should be all tripped up <laughs> when you live for God. They should be all tripped up. They should be out of whack. Because you constantly serve Jesus. Why? Because I'm different. I talk different. I believe different. When people come to me and say, hey, such and such family member is sick. They just gave them a grave diagnosis. Normal says, oh, my God. Oh, I feel so bad for them. Different says, okay, man, let's go. Let's go pray. Let's go believe God in Jesus' name. For with man, impossible. But with God, all things are possible to those who believe. We talk different. We don't get caught up in the same language as this world does. Are, are you hearing me? Listen, this movie, these women, they were different. They were constantly being treated like, ah, uh, like nothing. And they could have retaliated, and they could have started saying, you know what, screw NASA. Man, you know what, let's, let's go and let's go try to find another job. And, and, and you know, we can't, we're done with this. Let's go bring out our little poster boards and start, you know, what, picketing this whole situation. 
Let's go to human resource and just tell on them. Let me tell you something. The difference is, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to do something about this. You see, it's hard to think like that when you're being abused. The Bible says this, and do not return evil upon evil, but good upon evil. That's different. Are you with me today? Say it with me, I'm different. Come on, say it, I'm a foreigner. Say it, I'm strange. Yeah, we're strangers, we're strange. People should be like, Dan, you're so strange, your family's strange. Yeah, because we serve God, dude, that's why. Yeah, but you're strange. No, dude, you're normal. That's what you do. You say, you're normal. You're str- I'd rather be strange than normal. Because normal is passing away. Strange has an eternal destination. I'll tell you what normal is. I had cancer. And everyone and their mother were saying, he's going to die. But I have faith. And I said, what man can do, God can do for me. And 11 years later, I'm still alive. That's different. That's different. That's different. Be different. Be different. God created us to be different, not normal. We're, we're, we live in this world. Come on, we're not stupid either. Come on, don't be so spiritually spooky that you're earthly no good either, okay? In this church, we have a very... We have a very wonderful balance of, of the spirit and the practical. And don't get me wrong, man. We are Holy Ghost Spirit filled in this church. And we believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. Okay, so if it's true that I'm different, then that means I have different values. If you say you're different, then you have a different value than the world does. Here's what the world thinks. Here's, here's the value of the world. In today's culture, they say if it feels good, do it. Right? Have you ever talked to people that are like, man, you're telling them your situation? Like, dude, just, just follow your heart, man. Just follow your heart. <laughs> just, just, whatever you feel, just, just, you feel that? <laughs> you, you're cray cray to follow your heart. Your heart will lead you to all kinds of destruction. How many jacked up relationships have we had because we followed our heart? No, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus and then he will expose and he will show. So many times we, without even knowing, we are like the world. We do what we feel. You know what? I, I, I really believe this. I believe that, that the world's greatest sin is not being true to yourself. Have you ever heard that? Man, you, you better keep it real. <laughs> you got to be true to yourself, man. Right? Have you ever heard this one? Uh, man, you got to express yourself. Don't hold back. You tell them how you feel. Listen, that's normal. Because feelings are always subject to change. But the people that you speak to and hurt and retaliate against, you can damage something for a very long time. All because you're so emotionally driven instead of being a follower of Jesus and looking different. Take one for Jesus here and there. It's okay to be strange. It's okay to be different. You know why? Because I'm a foreigner. The church is an alien. And I'm just passing by. And so are you if you are a real Christian. Can I be direct with you? Churches all over America today are filled with Christians. But sometimes I ask myself, I wonder if they're truly Christians. You see... Listening to podcasts, watching live stream, they're wonderful things, but that's not church. Going to church every so often when you feel like it or only when you have problems, that's not church. That's not. Having a genuine, true, personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, that's being the church. 
Oh, you don't believe me. It's okay. You guys want another movie? Listen, when you live different, you have different standards. You have different standards. As a parent, you parent different. Oh, yeah. They, hey, this past Saturday, it was awesome. We had our, uh, our uh, I Love My Toddler. Man, it was packed. It's probably like 40, 50 parents that came to that thing. It was awesome, man. I didn't know we had that many toddlers. Um, but this, I, I, I saw this mom, and if you're here, if you're awesome, I saw this mom, and she was carrying her baby. And she's like, oh, my God. And I'm walking to like towards the church. She's like, oh, my God. She's like, is this where it's going to be at, where it's going to be? I'm like, uh, I love my toddler. She's like, yeah. She's holding her toddler. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I need to be here because of. You, I, I'm like, girl, I get you. <laughs> I, right this way, I opened the door for her. <laughs> as you were, praise Jesus. You know why? Because as a parent, you think different. You parent different. Your marriage is different. Your marriage doesn't look like everyone else. Your marriage is not normal. When you serve Jesus, your marriage is different. You talk different. You save different. You invest different. You believe together different. Everything you do in life is different when you have a standard in your family. You raise your children different. Oh, no, I don't want my kids to be, I don't want my kids to be bullied at school, man. I need to have them stand up. Oh, trust me. I know that when my kid, my boy Isaac, who you guys saw, when he was on his football team, man, they used to bully him because my son has, has never dated anyone. And and he because he has this standard of being pure and 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 the the woman that he he eventually finds and and that's the woman he's going to marry because he has a standard of what she's going to look like and what she's going to be like, and he was being uh, bullied by the football team because they called him a faggot. Uh, sorry to say that word, but that's what they call him. And I got angry as a parent. Man, I want to go knock out some kids and then get saved again, right? <laughs> Just keeping it real. I'm like, man, let me just put, let me, give me your gear, bro. I'm going to go knock some people out. I'm just going to pretend I'm you and I'm going to just, I'm going to knock some teeth out. And then I repent. I'm like, God, forgive me, God, because I just got, I was normal for a minute. And I just, I'm like, God, bring different back in me, God. And, and, and you know, I told Isaac, Isaac, I'm like, you know what? That's what persecution looks like because you stand up for Jesus. He led half the football team to Jesus Christ because he stayed the course. That's different. That's different. Are you hearing me? Say it, I have a different standard. We have different goals. I said, let me give them an example. Look at this. Look at different versus normal. Normal says, I want a house. But different says, I want a house to minister to people. See, um, I remember when, when Kurt and Holly uh, first purchased their land where they built their custom home. I asked them, why, why, do you, why do you want your house? Why do you want a house? And you know what? Normal people say, well, because it's the dream, man. We all, man, man God, God promised me a house. No, but when I spoke to them, I said, no, here's the deal. And, and, of course, they had the right intention. But I said, Kurt, Holly, I said, the reason you want this house is because in this house, marriages are going to be restored. People are going to walk through these, 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 these houses. And we literally put scriptures at every doorway when it was just bare bones. And we said, and this, and this will be the living room, and this is where you will see marriages being restored. And healed. there'll be crying, there'll be tears. There'll be people that are not church people that will come to your house and will receive Christ. It'll be just amazing. And let me tell you something. This is before they became the Elevate Marriage Ministry leaders. And here they have a house. Why? Because... They want a house to minister to people. Number two, I want more money. I deserve more money. I'm a tither. Glory to Jesus. No, no, no. See, but the different person says, God, I want more money to fund God projects and to help other people. See, when you have a generous spirit, God not only provides for you with abundance, but God will provide abundance so that you can also help others. Number three, I want more friends. I don't got enough friends, God. I want me some more friends. For what? Well, the different person says, I want more friends to share Jesus with. I want to see people go to heaven with me. Some of you, you know you're a Christian. You're, the people you work with, they have no clue you're a Christian. Why? Because you're too scared to tell them you're a Christian because of how you've been living. If you were to say I'm a Christian, you may jack up your thing right now. Or they may say, what? 
Right, let's move on. Four. <laughs> I'm tired of dealing with those people. I'm so sick of my boss. I'm sick of my kid. I'm just, oh, I'm, but different people say, I'm tired of dealing with those people, so I will pray for faith. I'm going to pray for love, and I'm going to pray for patience. Number five, I'm so misunderstood. Nobody understands me up in this place. No one ever gets me, man. Everyone just always blames me. No one understands. No, you know what? Let me tell you something. What if you just said different? What did you say? What if you said, you know what? I'm so misunderstood, so dang, I need to be a little bit more clear. Some of us don't even know how, don't even know how to put two sentences together. You're always offending someone because you opened your mouth. <laughs> Listen, I always tell my staff, and they're here, ask them. I always tell them, I'm like, when you speak to your teams, use the word of God. Why? Because the word of God brings truth. It brings freedom. It brings inspiration. It brings motivation. Your words, man, let me tell you something. They're cool for a while. Then they're boring. But God's word is always fresh. It's always new. Man, it's, it's inspiring. You hear, like I'm reading your scriptures today, man. You're just like, dang. I didn't know I was a foreigner. Right, it just brings like a whole nother level of revelation. Like now you can leave here today. Man, listen, aliens aren't the aliens out there. You're the alien. <laughs> yeah. You're not of this world. And so you have to say, you know what? Maybe I'm misunderstood because I'm not clear with my speech. Instead of being so up in your head, uh, no one understands. Yeah, I don't even understand you sometimes. You know, what's wrong with you? Say different. John 15, 19, look at this. Quick, let's go, let's go. It says, if you belong to the world, look at this. The world would love you as its own and would treat you with affection. But you're not of the world. You no longer belong to it. If you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you, you, you stop loving the world. When you love the spirit of this world, the love of the Father is no longer in you. You're different. Now, we love the world, but we love the world with meaning. I want to win my family to Christ. I want to win my coworkers to Christ. I want to win my friends to Jesus. Look at this. But you're not of the world. You no longer belong to it. But I have chosen. There's that word again. I have what? Chosen you. Out of the what? World. And because of this, the world hates you. Get over your drama. No, if I say I'm a Christian, man, they're going to treat me different. Duh, because you're different. Yes, they are going to treat you different. They're going to call you wacky whack. They're going to call you Jesus freak. They're gonna, but guess what? As Peter spoke to the church, you are a foreigner. You need to find what's on the inside of you. What's on the inside of you? Look at this, 1 Peter 1, 6, 7. Again, Peter reminds the church and he says, hey, look, this is what's in you. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. There is wonderful joy ahead. Right now, your, your circumstance is temporary because there is wonderful joy ahead. It's going to pass, guys. It's not forever. There is wonderful joy ahead. It's hard to look ahead because your present is more real than your future. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. So if you're all a mess every time a trial comes, you're not genuine in the faith. What's the opposite of genuine? False. So either, you're either a genuine follower of Jesus or you're a false follower of Jesus. Because the trials expose the real you in Jesus. I'm finished. I'm done. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. gold. Though your faith is far from, far more precious than more mere gold. Listen, that's why we come to church. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, it says, it says uh, uh, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. You want to grow in faith, keep coming. Don't be a hit or miss Christian. Be, be consistent. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you so much praise and glory and honor to the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. 
Come on. What, what, let me give you this real quick. There's two types of false faith. Number one, it's the inherited faith. The reason I go to church is because, you know what, Pastor, my grandma was a churchgoer. My mama was a churchgoer. My uncle, my cousin. As a matter of fact, Pastor, I'm in church because my wife brought me to church. Inherited faith. Okay, praise God that you got some inheritance. But when are you going to have your personal faith? Stop living off of someone else's faith and start creating one that's different. And get hooked up with God. Shack up with him. He's awesome. Say inherited faith. The second kind of faith in Christians is conditional faith. You believe God when everything is just awesome. And then when something doesn't go your way, you get angry at God. You get mad at God. You blame God. If I prayed for that person and they died, God, why did you let that happen? That's conditional faith. You only walk in faith when it's good for you. No, you are called, last week we learned, unwavering faith. Or Wednesday, I forgot what day I taught on that. Say genuine faith. These three women could have quit and said, forget this. We are so bound by our race. And they had every right to say that. But they pushed the envelope because they figured it out. What was given to them, genuine faith. They trusted God. Having genuine faith will help you do three things. Number one, number one, it will help you be indispensable. Instead of being so afraid about not having work tomorrow, why don't you have more faith to be different and to be so awesome at the workplace and to go above and beyond where you're so indispensable, you're too good to get rid of you. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Pastor. It is so good. These women were called human calculators. No dignity. But guess what? <laughs> they were the best human calculators there were in NASA. Huh? How about that? Number two. And they were all promoted, by the way. Number two, focus on what you can control, not what you can't. So many of us focus on what we can't control. Guess what? They couldn't control the fact that racism and, and, and all the, the adverse, they couldn't control people. But they could control how they responded or reacted. Stop blaming other people for your stuff. You can't control what others say. Or do, but you can't control what you say and how you respond. Stop focusing on things that you can't control. And put your focus on, but what I can do is I can be awesome in this moment. Are you with me? Number three, quick. Number three, look for the greater meaning in your work. Some of us go to work just to collect a paycheck. That's normal. Find the meaning. Of whatever you do. I tell my son, my son, he, he works for, for Ralph's. And, and I told Isaac, boy, I'm like, you better, you, dude, you're representing me, dog. <laughs> you know why? Because I started working at 15 years old at Alpha Beta. Y'all remember Alpha Beta for all you older folk? <laughs> Alpha Beta, bag boy. Class of 19, I won't even say it. <laughs> and so my son took the same path. You know, he's still in high school, but... You know, and he's got great vision for what God's going to do with him. But um, I said, boy, you better, you don't do what you're asked. You do what you're asked and some. He's only worked there for months. He's already been promoted and given two raises in less than six months. Now the pharmacy wants him. He's like, dad, I'm going for the pharmacy. I'm like, why, dude? He's like, they pay serious money at the pharmacy. <laughs> And, and he's like, and I speak Spanish, and they give you extra bonus for Spanish. I'm like, dude, you can barely speak Spanish. He's like, no, dad, dad I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'm like, it took a job <laughs> with a little pay raise to get him to speak Spanish. Help him, Jesus. <laughs> Whatever works. He found meaning in it. <laughs> Bow your head, close your eyes. Let's get out of here. Father, I thank you because this message today was not for some. This was for all. And I'm praying, God, that you would help every single person here 
to be different and to no longer accept normal as regular living in this life. You have called us and created us to be different people, people that follow Jesus knowing that we will be persecuted, knowing that we will have challenges, knowing that we will have trials. But as Jesus said, but be of good cheer for I have overcome this world. And so Lord, today we receive your grace to be better. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.